I left the dealer. I tried to drive the RV and I just remember screaming, oh my gosh, it doesn't stop. What did I sign up for? This thing doesn't stop. I'm yelling because I'm pretty hyper. Like I, you know, I didn't handle stress very well. You, and- you're not hyper. Come on. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Flip Lifestyle Podcast. I'm Shane Sams. I'm your host. It's great to be back with you again today as we help another real member from the Flip Lifestyle community take their online business, their membership, their dream to the next level. And I am really pumped up because I'm going to be hanging out today with Christine Source. So, Christine, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be on here with you. I've been waiting for this day because I can't wait to hear what you have to say. <laughs> We had, we actually had this scheduled. We had a total disaster last time, and we we just uh, everything just fell apart. We missed the appointment, and then we came back. But see, we always come back. See, you can you can swing once and miss, and always come back and take another swing, guys. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Even in my, I've done a thousand podcasts, and guess what? Things still go wrong sometimes. But it's not about me. It's about Christine. So, Christine, tell everybody real quick about you, a little bit about your background, and your family, stuff like that, and then tell us about what your online business is. So I went to Columbia Law School and was working the corporate world, putting in a lot of hours until 11 o'clock every night. And I loved that job. I was on partner track and I absolutely loved it. And then I had kids and uh, the babysitter, which was my mother-in-law, wanted me to be home by five or six o'clock every night. And it just didn't work. I always say I really needed to live two lives, my business life and then my, my kid mom life. So I decided that I was going to stay home with the kids about the time that my daughter was 18 months and my son was three. And so I really enjoyed that time. And then I put them into private school and things were great. The private school was great, but I wasn't getting to spend any time with my kids. We've always been very heavy into activities, dance and baseball and all the things. And I drop them off to school. They eat dinner in the car. I'd race them off to their activities. And I thought, this is not the life that I signed up for when I decided to give up my hundred thousand plus salary. I'm still not seeing my kids. So I'll never forget the day. It was right before Christmas. All my kids fell asleep on the floor and tile floor, mind you. And I was doing their homework. And I thought, I don't really need to do third grade again. <laughs> I've already done this. And I didn't really sign up for this when I quit my job. Every single one of them, they were, they look like they just dropped like flies. And so I will never forget. I was driving to school like the last day before Christmas break. And I told my husband, I said, I think I want to homeschool. We'd had a number of friends that had left private school to homeschool. And I knew that what he thought about homeschoolers and that he would think that it was a crazy idea, but he had seen that I was leaving sticky notes for the kids on their homework and, you know, just really trying to make this work. And he said, yep, let's do it. You, you homeschool them. And so that was the beginning of the journey of the different life that we live, that we live. And so we did that. And I'll never forget the day that my sister called me and she said, I'm going to buy an RV. And I said, why are you going to buy an RV? And she said, well, I want to go chase the kids around in their activities. They dirt bike a lot. It's loud. We want somewhere to hang out so we can, you know, really just do the kids activities and make memories. Well, my sister and I had both grown up tent camping with my mom. We had gone at least once a month, our entire childhood. They belonged to a campground resort. And I say resort, we stayed in the tent, but it was so much fun. So we both had this love of nature and camping and we had a little bit of sibling rivalry going on. So I said, okay, well, let me, let me talk to Mike. And I said, Mike, we need to buy an RV. (laughs) Were you like, I'm going to get a bigger RV, (laughs) which she said, I'm going to get an RV. You're like, all right, wait a minute. I'm going to get the bigger one. You got what? 32 foot. I'm going 48 foot. Let's go. Let's do this. (laughs) It's so true. It's so true. And so Mike is usually pretty amenable to what I want. And so he's like, well, I grew up in hotels with a single mom, but if you want an RV, you, you go do the research and figure it out. So that same weekend I went out and I ended up purchasing what we call breakdown Betsy because everything broke down. And so we lovingly called it Breakdown Betsy. And we we just traveled in Texas basically that first year because I'll never forget, I left the dealer. I tried to drive the RV and I just remember screaming, oh my gosh, it doesn't stop. What did I sign up for? This thing doesn't stop. I'm yelling because I'm pretty hyper. Like I, you know, I didn't handle stress very well. You, and- you're not hyper. Come on. <laughs> I know, right? I've been on member calls where you're there. You're pretty hyper. Sometimes. Yes, I am. And so anyway, I just literally the first stop sign, I got out. I'm like, I'm not doing this. And we just signed the paperwork and everything. So Mike took over. He had no experience, but he's a lot calmer than I am. And so he would every single month for the first year, drive an hour away, set me up at the campground with the kids and turn around and go home because he doesn't like camping. 
<laughs> oh so my I gosh, that's funny. That I know. And he always say he had to work, which he does. But you know, we'd we'd be sitting around the campfire, and I felt guilty because I thought, here I am sitting around the campfire while he's home, you know, and he's the one having to do all the hard work. So I thought I'm going to put on my big girl panties and I'm going to do this myself. And I wanted to get out of state. I wanted to go do some dance scholarships with my daughter in California. So for mother's day, this was the best mother's day gift I ever got. He made me a laminated checklist with pictures of how to hook up my truck, unhook up, well, I had an SUV back then, but hook up my SUV, unhook up my SUV, set up a camp and tear down a camp. And I carried that thing around like my Bible. I had my Bible on the bed stand and my checklist in my storage unit. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's um, funny. and so that first summer, Shane, I think I learned more than most people would learn in a lifetime of RVing. I had a brand new truck and they lied to me and said that it was going to be strong enough to pull my trailer. And it wasn't. So we're going up the mountains in Utah, 103 degrees, and my new truck starts flashing power failure. And I told oh, no. the kids, yes, I told the kids, I said, we're going to see Jesus. Of course, I freak out again. I don't know what to do. You know, we're going to see Jesus. Y'all better pray. And God, I always say we have camping angels in our car. And I truly believe it. I cannot tell you the times that God has just, you know, put a person right there, a person right there to help us out. So we had somebody that let us follow them. They were like teenagers. They let us follow them for three hours to make sure that we could get where we're going. Cause they said, well, we have nowhere to be, you know, they're going like 45 on the highway and we got to where we're going and the, the trailer did it again in Las Vegas. So I ended up being stranded for two weeks in Las Vegas and had to buy a new truck and I got him to pay for my campground. <laughs> so basically within one summer, you learned everything that there is about RVing and like RVing and homeschool. You were homeschooling while you were doing this. And now you're turning this knowledge of RVing into RV mama, right? Like where you're going to teach other people how to do that. Like, tell me how this is becoming an online business. So my passion was to prevent other people from having to learn from the school of hard knocks over. I mean, not going backwards or going uphill with your trailer because the car <laughs> doesn't pull it fast enough. Like, yeah, that's probably a good thing to hit the people yes. need to go ahead of time. So many things, eight and a half years of having probably almost everything that could go wrong, go wrong. But I ended up buying a new trailer once everything had kind of gotten all the, the kinks out and learned everything. And now I really want to serve other people. My motto is making memories one mile at a time because I want to create a legacy for my kids. I want to travel all 50 states in the RV by the time my 10 year old graduates. And the reason why I want to do that now is because you don't know what your health is going to be like in the future. You don't know if your kids are going to want to travel with you. You just don't know what's coming next. And it's why I love Flip Lifestyle and why I was so attracted to you and your business is that you put your lifestyle ahead of your work and God mm -hmm. ahead of everything. And those are my mottos too. And that is what I really want to help people do. I can save them the heartache, the time, the money, the risk of like, you know, hurting your trailer, hurting somebody's life or health just from having learned all of this, because now it's mm -hmm. secondhand nature. You know, now I, I know what to do. So basically you're building a community of other RV mamas, right? Like it's other uh, women in particular who want to yeah. go out and do this. Cause again, maybe they don't know how to do it. Maybe they've never done it before. Maybe they don't have a mic to come and set up the thing for them, but they want to live this homeschool lifestyle. They want to live this traveling lifestyle. And now we're trying to build out a community. So tell me where is the business now? Like what, what does it look like? Do you have content out in the marketplace uh, for our audience? What are you doing to grow this business? First of all, just, and then we'll talk about some questions here in a second of how we can help you make it happen. You have opened the doors, correct? Yes, I have. I have a completed website and I have over 99 topics from start to finish in my website of, you know, do you rent? What type of RV you buy all the way up to how do you winterize? How do you do all these different things? And so are these, I'm like, are, these are these like blog posts or are they like courses or something like courses? So, oh, okay. Honestly, so that's the, so that's the product. product. That's the product. That's my product. Is, yes. Yeah. And they have gotcha. videos and written descriptions. And so I'm building that out. The price will go up as I get all 99 videos in there, but they can see every topic right now and a number of the topics. So if members want me to open an additional one, I can. Gotcha. So right now we've built a, a, a website. We have a, we can go to, is it rvmama.com? What's the uh, RV mama of four. 
Oh, RV uh, Mama of one. Four. So it's kind of like your blog, right? And people yes. can go there. And if they want, if they're living the RV lifestyle, if they want to connect with other um, RV mamas, if they want to do that. And then you're going to basically in there as you can, you have all the information people need to set up all their RVs. You're connecting RV people together so they can talk about campgrounds and whatever they have to do. And then we're going to create content about this. Okay, cool. So this is awesome. First of all, congratulations. Thanks. Most people never open their doors. Okay. Right. You are on the World Wide web and things are happening right now. So what questions do you have about growing this thing? Like what, where are you stuck? Where are you uh, at right now? So first of all, I have big news after I was really inspired by you saying that you sold your house and moved to a smaller house to make your dreams a reality. I wanted to go all in on this business. And so we are moving out of a 4,200 square foot house on June 9th. I just purchased a brand new truck on Friday because I purchased a brand new RV yesterday. And so I literally am going all in on this lifestyle. We're going to be living full time with my husband that hates camping, but we're going to be living full time <laughs> in the RV to really make this a reality so that we can provide wow. people full service. And you were my inspiration for that. When you moved across the tracks, I listened to that same story over and over. So a couple of the things that I'm doing is I'm also offering one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm offering the membership. I offer towing services. We're doing campground meetups. I have one booked in Kansas and I'm headed to Houston because they actually want me to be on the Fox local news the second week in June and teach their reporters on three different news hours, how to drive my RV. So I also cool. do driving lessons. I have some clients in Colorado, but there's only one of me. So one of the things that that's created is I have people in California and Kentucky saying, can you give me driving lessons? You know, can you come to Texas and stay longer? So trying to figure out I want to do all these things, but how do I feasibly mm. do that while I homeschool my kids, you know, while we're yep. going full time? Um, so that's one of my questions. One of the things that I'm really doing to work hard to get myself out there is my YouTube channel, because that's where our viewers go. And I have been posting YouTube or YouTube shorts every day. I have an accountability partner in Flip Lifestyle, and we post every day. Same with my Facebook group. I posted every day since January. So those are the things that I'm relentless and prolific about, but I need to grow my email list. I'm doing guest podcasting, but my email list still isn't really growing. And I have a lot of big corporate companies that want to give me deals. I'm working with trailer source, Dodge Ram, Camping World, and I need to figure out I can offer them marketing, but what can they offer me? So those are the mm -hmm. three big areas of growth that I'm kind of stuck how to grow my email list. What do I do with these big corporate companies? And with my YouTube channel, how do I maximize on saying I'm going full time? This is what I'm doing every day. All right. That's a lot. I we're know. Back up. <laughs> All right. We're going to back up, which we do. Okay. <laughs> Number one, we've got to get clarity. Okay. I can do a lot of things. There's a lot of, I have all kinds of things that I can go do, but what do I do? I speak. I podcast and I grow my membership and coaching. That's it. Like you can't do all these things. You can't be, you can't offer, you can't offer to teach everyone how to drive one-on-one. -on -one. You can't travel around the country. You can't go to this. You can't do that. Like you just can't do all these things. You have to decide what you're going to build. Okay. And what I assume you want to build just from conversations we've had in the past is RV lifestyle. And you want people to join your membership and some of them to hire you as a coach. Okay. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. I really want to build that one-on-one -on -one coaching so that people can get out there quickly. So that's yeah. a piece you, of what I'd like to build. You have to say no to everything else. We've got to stop looking at everything you could do. And we have to say, this is what I'm going to do. Like that's the difference in everyone that makes it like there's, you can't just say uh, there's, there's so many things you could do on the internet with your online business that if you try to do them all, you'll fail because you'll do nothing well and you'll not have time to do anything else, right? So you have to go all in basically on one thing, right? On your YouTube channel, how many followers do you have right now? I'm just growing that about a hundred. So it's not okay. huge yet. As, as soon as you tell them there's only a hundred people following you right now, they're going to not give you any money. Like that's just not going to happen, right? 
it, it sounds amazing. Like I'm, I, it, the dream may be someday to be the number one RV channel on YouTube where Camping World and all these people come to you. That's great. That should be a long-term goal, but you have to work backwards from that goal and say, okay, these people might want to do this, but I have to, the, uh, the only reason they're ever going to do this is because you have an audience, right? Mm -hmm. So that immediately says, well, wait a minute, I have to grow an audience, right? That's going to take time and effort, right? So audience growth is, I would not even be on a phone call with any of these people. I would not reach out to these people. That is wasted hours of your life right now, right? Because they, 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 neither one of you can do anything for each other. They're not going to pay you for advertising or anything like that. They might give you a sponsorship. They might give you like a free steering wheel cover for your RV. If they, if you mention them, right. Even referral fees, you have no one to refer. So you're, it's just an affiliate deal. You can sign up for that in five minutes. There's no reason to even waste energy on this, right? Okay. What you, it, you said you wanted to grow your email list. The only way your email list grows is if your audience grows. So we have to grow your audience, the audience on your YouTube channel. That's it. Nothing else matters. I don't even know if I would log into any other social media account right now, if I were you right now, just to say, how can we clear all the decks to where you think about nothing but YouTube all day long, period. We teach strategies about sharing of things everywhere. Like you make one content for one place then share it everywhere. That's, but that is totally gravy. Okay. If, if you got to pick and plant your flag, like I'm only going to think about YouTube every minute of every day for right now. Okay. I know you've got Instagram and you've got other things. We're going to just push those to the side for a minute. That's called repurposing. That is, that is something that can be batched and done later. And it doesn't even have to worry about it because if you grow your audience, then your email list will grow. If you grow your YouTube channel and your audience, then sponsorships will become more lucrative. But when you put the cart before the horse and you're talking about the, all these things like that could happen, you know, it's fine. And also too, even opportunities that might be like, I will, if you will come to Texas, I will teach you how to do my RV. I will pay you to do this. But that's, that's insane. Like you can't just drive to Kentucky from Colorado. You know what I'm saying? Every right. time someone wants you to teach an RV because you have a family and you have a life and you have other things. At the end of the day, you have to grow the membership because the membership provides the coaching clients. So the four step process that you have to do, the only four things you should think on right now, based on what I know about your business is one audience, you have to grow your YouTube channel. Nothing else matters. Two, the YouTube channel will grow your email list, right? Your content there. Then your email list, you can sell into your membership. People who follow you can join your membership. And then your members are probably your most likely coaching people that will hire you to be a coach extra because they want to go faster. So like anything that's not YouTube, email, membership, or coaching, you need to say no to right now okay. because you got to be somewhere before you can be everywhere. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think that that's been a big thing. I love the content explosion. And, and I hear what you're saying is that that's got to wait a little bit because I feel like I have so much to offer in so many different ways that I can help serve people that it's hard to slow down, but you're right because I am guest podcasting. Let me tell you how that works, where that goes. YouTube is where you grow audience. This is where people get really confused. Okay. So YouTube basically let's call audience growth. Now, here's what I mean by the word audience. I grow my audience through the Flip Lifestyle podcast. Am I on YouTube? Yes. Am I on Facebook? Yes. Am I on Instagram? Yes. But when I sit down and say, how do we grow our audience to my team? Everyone on my team 100% knows the podcast is the number one thing we think about, period. It, it produces all the other content that happens, right? Like this video of me and you is going to be enhanced and put on YouTube with graphics and fun things and whatever, right? This yeah. audio will be stripped and turned into a podcast. That's the content explosion. But you're going to think about YouTube. That's where you're going to grow your audience. But something else has to happen first before audience. It's what we call discovery. Discovery for you can be guesting, right? Like okay. you're going on other people's podcasts right now, all right? And getting guesting. But but let's think about your unique situation first. You are trying to grow a YouTube channel, not a podcast. Where should you be guesting on a YouTube channel show or on podcasts? 
You tell me. Oh, uh, yeah. A YouTube channel show would make a lot more sense. Exactly. Because a podcast listener is going to be much more interested in listening to a podcast, which is fine. And you may have a podcast that is stripped audio from your YouTube channel or whatever, if you have a YouTube show. That might be why people aren't converting into emails is because they you, they, they got to find you on YouTube and then go follow you on YouTube. And then on YouTube, you can start offering free things to get people to uh, opt in, to do other things like that. Okay. Okay. So that this, makes a lot of sense. Let me just go through this real quick. Discovery yeah. is guesting. Once people discover you, they can come to your content. Your particular content is YouTube. And that's where you build an audience. You build a relationship with that. Okay. Now, once they join your email list, it becomes a two-way relationship where you can email each other and have fun back and forth. And then you can sell people into your membership and then your members will buy your coaching. Yes. But if anything doesn't process. exist in those words we just used, you've got to say no to it right now. Okay. Because this has to work first for anything else to work. Okay. So uh, hold off on the podcasting and blogging and all those other not things. Not necessarily. Like, so what I'm, so when I look at my, so there's five tiers, there's discovery, audience, email list, which is where relationship builds. Then there's the membership, which is where your community payment starts. Then people who buy things buy more things. So there's coaching, right? That's the general sales funnel for this model that we teach the membership model. Audience is really cool because like we have to be able to get in front of people to build audience, to get discovered, to see things. So guesting is a great strategy because it's free and you don't have to spend money on ads. You can just build relationships and get people on people's shows. But like, if you've got the content, Christine, there's no problem with you sharing it in other places. That's a sharing strategy. That's not the core strategy of the business. That's a tactic to grow the core strategy. Like I'm going to share a video of that. We, we take this hour long podcast and we edit it down to 15 minutes, which I'm not telling you to do this. Don't do what I do. Do what I did. That's how you build your business. Right? So what we do is though, we, we take this and we put it on Facebook in a place where people can find it and see it. And then we have a link back to the podcast though. Like if I'm sharing anything anywhere else, repurposing content, it's just to drive traffic back to the podcast. If I share this on YouTube, I'm going to have a link to the podcast. I share this on Facebook. I'm like, it's all driving traffic back to the core content, which is your YouTube channel, right? So like okay. you can share it everywhere else, but you got to say no to teaching people how to drive a car. You're not, if you're doing that, you're not going to, you're not building a membership. You got to say no to trying to get sponsorship deals for a YouTube channel with a hundred people. You need a hundred thousand people. Let's go build that. Right. It's just, it's just getting ahead of yourself. Um, for all these, these are opportunities and it, yeah. opportunities are addicting, but if you don't build the, if you don't build the thing that actually is the foundation of the whole business, none of the opportunities will ever actually materialize. While I'm focusing on the YouTube channel, then you can, I can still turn, like you said, the content explosion that into a blog or podcast as well, but always drawing people back to the YouTube channel. Yeah. I'm always focusing on that. Like I actually say like, you know, if you want to listen to the whole podcast, if you want to go back to the whole podcast, if you want to, cause we just, we just keep that in our, in our top of mind. Right. Because you can't do everything to the, like, you can't be a YouTuber and be a podcaster. You have to be a podcaster who repurposes on YouTube and it's not going to be as good until you get a team until you have like, I got 12 people working for me, you know, like I can do different things. But like, like you can't do everything at a high level. You got to do, you got to be somewhere before you can be everywhere. Right. And a lot of your opportunities that you're looking at though, I'm not, I don't think the content and the sharing is the problem. It's all product. Like, are you going to start a membership community or not? Like you have to answer that question. And if the answer is yes, then you say no to everything else. Like when I said yes to memberships, I turned off Google ads. I took affiliate links off of my website. I stopped advertising anything else on my podcast, but my products and my membership, because that's the top of the funnel. And like, it, it's just too hard to do 97 different things, especially in the beginning. Like the goal is get discovered, build an audience, grow your list, get 500 people to pay you $50 a month. Like don't go past that. Like anything that doesn't, fit in your plan, the business plan that you've set up there is something you almost have to say no to in the short term because you just can't do it all. 
you know? So if I really want to grow the big ticket one-on-one coaching, because I do enjoy that piece of it within the membership, you know, like the ones where you're charging $3,000 for your, however many months you offer, I feel like that would be really valuable to the clients because a lot of them just want to know about their situation and how do I get out on the road in three months before camping season ends. And then others are like, okay, I want to join the membership because I'm going to go full time in a year. So I feel like I have a lot of people that are, you know, in two different situations. How do you begin and start that one-on-one big ticket coaching where you know that you have the skills to offer, but just jumping into that or providing that, what would your tips be on that? Well, So you can offer coaching easily right out of the gate. It's fine. It's just an upsell to your membership. It still exists. But like, when you think about coaching, what are they going to be doing? One, they're going to be going through your product. So they're going to have access to the membership anyway. So what has to be built first? You have to do coaching. You've got to be able to say, go watch this training. I taught you how to do it. This is exactly your next step, but you can't just sit there with them and change the RV tire. They've got to still have the content. So you're building the membership first, no matter what you do, right? You're just guiding people through your process. Like when you coach with me, like right now, what am I doing? The the thing I'm going to tell you to do immediately is go watch the sales funnel training again, because you have to understand how the sales funnel works. So I'm not going to sit and build your sales funnel with you. I'm coaching. I'm telling you exactly what to do, but you've gotten outside of the funnel. You've got 14 funnels you're trying to build (laughs) at once. That's not possible. I do feel like that. You're looking at the, the, the problem is you're taking your eye off the prize you're, you're, you're too fixated on 97 things or fat or what's going to like what's happening instead of one straight railroad track, like the railroad track, the, the, the process works. If it goes discovery audience, email list, membership coaching, that's just the path. Some people are going to skip steps because they're ready for coaching. Right. But if you're spending an hour talking to camping world's senior manager of marketing for no reason, you're not focused on your next coaching client. If you're focused on and trying to get, you know, a Winnebago to buy an ad on your podcast or whatever, like you're not focused on getting your next coaching client. And that usually comes from your members. I'm just telling you right now, high ticket sales come from people who've already paid you money. That's really true. You know, think about how you came to, right. You came to one of my live events, you bought a ticket to that live event, and then you bought coaching. Like it's just people are, people have to build trust in a product before they'll do that. Will some people jump up and say, Hey, I just want to go straight to the end of the line. Of course, we all buy fast passes at Disney world for a reason, but at the same time, 90% of people aren't going to do that. Right. So you have to nurture them and get them in an incubator where they're in this thing and this thing's growing. But even if they're whatever they buy, you have to focus. Uh, You have to focus on one path that you're going to create for your students or they're not going to buy anything because they're not going to know what to do. Right. So really what I hear you saying is that I should build out that membership. I have the 99 lessons mapped out bullet pointed behind the scenes, really dive in and focus on finishing that out. So when I have people that want to do the one-on-one, I do not think you should make 99 lessons. That's, I think you should go pick the 10 lessons people need the most and only make that because it's a minimum viable product. And I think I've told you to do this before. Like you can, you do not need to make 99 lessons. You need to have a list of the things that are coming soon. Yes. But like you need 10 things. There's a million different people, but you need to serve the per- one person, like the person who just bought the RV, a female who just bought a perfect or an RV and she needs to learn how to do the first thing. They don't even know how to hook it up to the hitch yet. They don't even know how to unhook it from the hitch. They don't know how to drop the feet down to balance it and level it. What are the first things that someone would do in the first two hours at their first campsite? You don't need to make anything else because until they learn that they can't do all those other things. Anyway, if, if I'm, if I, it's right now, may, if I buy RV mama, I'm an RV mama and I join your membership and I just got my camper. I'm going on my first camping trip this weekend. I don't need to know how to winterize my RV. That is a that is so irrelevant to me right now. I don't even that doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Like I need to know how do I unhook this thing so I can drive my car to the grocery store to get groceries for the RV, right? So yeah. like what are the what's the first hour of someone at an RV park look like? That's it. And then maybe how do you uh and that, that's the, probably the first thing. Then how do you put it back on the trailer to get it out of there? right? Can I go to an RV park, hook up my trailer, 
my RV and unhook it when I'm ready and get it and leave. Can I get there? Can I hang out? And can I leave? Don't worry about anything breaking. Don't worry about anything else. That's it. That's all you need to create. And then that's enough for most people because everything else then can be covered through questions. You can meet with mm-hmm. once a week, have a group meeting where people can ask you those other things. And you may think you know what you're supposed to make, but your people probably don't need 80% of what you're trying to put in there right now. That's, you know, like, for example, you've been in flip lifestyle. You can, there's, uh, there's so many courses. There's everything we could ever, there's nothing not covered in online business inside of our course. The first day I opened it, I had seven courses that were 30 minutes each. That was it. And we had 120 people join in the first month, right? You can't even have that happen because you're too scattered on all these other opportunities and you're not focused on what's the minimum thing that people would need if they were leaving Friday and they needed to come home Sunday to get the RV to that campsite and get it home. Not the things that can go wrong. That's it. That's your entire opening door product. In a nutshell, that that should not take more than seven days to create. Yeah, it's interesting that you say this for a number of reasons, because going back to my original story, that was my saving grace. To this day, that was the best Mother's Day gift I've ever got was the laminated sheets of those four steps. And I have that. So I still have them. Mike finally found it. It was like four computers back because I don't need it anymore. But and I have a number of videos. And so I can really focus on what you're saying. I have some of that already produced in the membership, but zone in on exactly what you're saying of don't worry about listen to what you just said. And listen to what you just said. In all the RVing you've done, in everything you've learned for the 99 videos and all of that, to this day, the most valuable, important gift you've ever been given on Mother's Day was four laminated pieces of paper that helped you unhook the RV. Just be that. for all, That's the first month of the whole memory. If you do that, they're not going to quit. Like you can add things as you go, but like, why would you not just video yourself doing those things? And like, that's your first things, right? You could give away an opt-in could be the laminated. You could literally just make a new one of those prettier and photocopy that and put it out there. And that's your opt-in. And then when they join, there's videos of you doing that. That's it. We overcomplicate everything in life, right? We need to simplify this. So that the RV mama who just bought her, there's some RV mama out there that just bought an RV, drove it off the lot and jumped out at the stop sign and said, I can't do this. <laughs> that, that, that Whatever happened next in your journey is all these people need to give them permission to go join this community, right? And then if they know that Christine's going to be there every Wednesday at 12 o'clock, they'll ask you other questions like, hey, I've used the thing. I got unhooked. How do I do this? Oh, that's the next thing I make next week. Hey, how do I do this? Oh, that's the next thing I make. Don't try to make a hundred courses. I bet you there's 50 of those courses that no one will ever ask for. And if you put time in making them, you wasted time. Just like talking to these other quote unquote opportunities. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And so for that, those um, four laminated sheets, I was going to ask you whether you thought that those should be a lead magnet or an upsell. I know you talk about having a product that you offer for like $10 or, okay. Lead, lead magnet. Yeah. Because uh, no, 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 that's, that's not exactly what there, there is. We do, do, we talk about what's called trip wires for certain products. Like if people want to use them for ads, that's more of an ad strategy. Cause you want to liquidate the cost of the ad with the purchase price. In general, what we do is give them something that's really useful for free. And it's really super simple. Give them the laminated sheets they can use, but then tell them immediately there's videos of you doing this that they can watch in the membership. And you can even offer them a free trial then for the membership to get them in there. Okay. But then like, um, but, but, but like keep that really valuable and really simple. And then let the first month's membership be the quote unquote tripwire. Um, you don't have to have like a seven to 10. If you're not running ads, that's completely not useful. That's in the ad strategies. Uh, for that. It's called a tripwire. And what it does is it takes people who join your email list and then you offer them a small product. It's like, so let's say it costs you $7 per lead to get an email for your list. Well, you might have a seven, you might have a $14 product because everyone that buys that pays for two emails. You're trying to liquidate the costs really quick for the ad spend. So it's not as expensive. And then, then they would join their membership later. But most of the time, what we do is get on our email list, offer you the membership, offer you coaching in that order as fast as possible. 
Um, that's all you really need to do. But I would say on the thank you page, hey, join the membership and you can watch videos of me doing this. And you can ask me questions if you get stuck. That's how that's that's uh that's how the sales funnel works. The thank you page is the sales page for the lot opt. Okay. And the good thing about that is my 10 year old and I spent nine hours videoing all of the initial stuff and it's still on my phone. So I actually need, because I've been doing so many things and and it's really cute because my 10 year old is actually my right hand man. When he's not there, I can do it, but it's harder. And so in all the videos, there's this little voice and he narrates like no other. Everybody says the best videos are the ones that your son narrates because he'll say, well, most people take, you know, a long time to do this, but my mom and I come back into the RV storage in less than one minute because that's how long Mm -hmm. a YouTube short is. (laughs) And so he'll narrate the whole thing. And so it's really cute. So I can really focus on like you said, getting those initial videos into the membership and then promoting that. And as far as the promoting, I bought Monica Louie's class, but I haven't dove into it at all yet because I wasn't there yet. Facebook ads. Yes. Do you think that Facebook ads or now YouTube is offering ads? Let me ask you a question. What is the number one content channel you're trying to grow? YouTube. Okay. So where should you spend ad money if you're going to spend ad money? Okay. On YouTube. That's right. When your plan is clear and you say no to everything outside the plan, it's a no brainer. These decisions are not hard. There's no choice anymore. Like we're all trying things and doing new things and learning new things. And like, that's cool. You've explored now. You've went through an exploration phase over the past couple months of where you're settling. But once you declare, I only am looking for RV moms who just bought their RV and are about to go on their first or second camping trip. That's your avatar. Forget Mm -hmm. the other people. Forget the people, anybody else. It doesn't matter. That makes every decision easier. Now, I'm only, I want to grow my YouTube channel. Make the call. Forget everything else. That means I'm going to show out on on YouTube. That means I'm going to, I have to figure out how to get YouTubers to join my email list, not podcast listeners. Totally different thing. YouTubers are watching it on a computer, they can click a link in a description. Podcasters, I've got to have different strategies. I've got to say, go to fliplifestyle.com slash idea and hope that they do it, right? So once you say no to everything else, these decisions become easy. Like for example, I just don't know if I want to do coaching or teach people how to drive or do a sponsorship. Well, hold on. You wanted to do YouTube. You only have hundred followers that eliminates all sponsorships and activities. Now I know that I have to build a membership and a coaching product. Like you, it's saying no is the superpower, uh, not saying yes when it comes to opportunities. Every day I get uh, asked to be on podcasts and I say no all the time. I mean, I just, there's, pod, I mean, we have, we have a limit of how many, I only have so many hours in the week that I can be a guest on other people's shows. I get requests every day to be on other people's podcasts. So we pick the six that are the most likely to get people to come back to our podcast. Like if I go to, if I got a guy that's on a podcast, but I find out it's on some YouTube live stream and they're just repurposing it. I don't want to be on that guy's podcast. I want a podcaster to interview me because I know that his podcast listeners are likely to listen to my podcast. So it's the same thing here. You just make the call and say no to all this other stuff, right? Say no to 99 videos. Can you say, I want to hear you say no, Christine, to 99 videos. Okay. Okay. I'll say no to 99 videos. You're allowed to make the videos that will get someone to a campground and home in one okay. weekend with no problems, right? And now you can say RV Mama's membership helps you take your first camping trip like a pro or your first RV trip like a pro. Now, when people see it, if I've had, a, if I've had an RV for 10 years, I don't need to come to your website right now. I don't want that person there. You need a person who's new to RV, right? Or, or enjoy your first summer RVing. Enjoy your first whatever. But you got to be able to speak the language of someone who will come buy your thing and hire you as a coach. You know? Yeah. So there are a number of other, like you're saying, they're not called podcasters, but a number of other YouTube channels. And they actually, I mean, you know who they are. I keep a list of them. So what would I do to, it's a little bit different than podcasting because they're kind of, a lot of them are in the same boat that I am. So what would I do as a strategy, really just reach out to them and say, Hey, can I be on your YouTube channel? Or how do you want to work? Is there any way to work together as a strategy? Yeah. I one, I would find out where they go for conferences and I would show up at that conference and okay. meet them. There, there are conferences for RVers and YouTubers and all kinds of stuff like that. So I'd find out where you, that's what I've always done is where is that person going to be? And how can I put myself in that room? Because if I put myself in the room, I will meet them. That's how it is. Right. Um, so that's the number one strategy I would say, if you want to get on their radar, 
Number two is uh, a strategy we call Dream 100 is you list out the top 100 YouTubers that you want to connect with and then start at the smallest audience and move backwards to the biggest audience because you want to connect with people that will definitely help you um, first. And a lot of people will just say yes because you, you're offering a collab is what you're doing. You want to collaborate. Like, hey, how can we collaborate? How can we do things? How can we help each other? But then the Dream 100 strategy like really is how can you serve them? You can't go into this like, hey, can I be on your YouTube channel? It's like, hey, I want to feature you on my YouTube channel. Can we do that? Can I interview you for my YouTube channel? Like I'm growing my YouTube channel. I'm going to be talking about RVers and just start connecting with people that way. Offer them your platform first. Offer them to connect with you first. Um, offer how you can help them first, right? Get figure out where they're at. Maybe you can be at that campground when they're there and then you can meet them and you can whatever, you know, like stalk them a little bit. But it's just, it's a straight, what can you do for them? Not what they can do for you effort. Um, and also too, a lot of people though, and if you've got money, like ads, ads are one thing, but if you see a YouTuber that has a hundred thousand followers, be like, Hey, can we do something together? I'll pay you X dollars to be on your channel, right? Work your way in or buy your way in. Roll up your sleeves or open your wallet. That's the only two paths in there, you know? Um, for you, what I would do too, this would be good market research. I have a philosophy too. Like I want to become people's best testimonial. If I can become someone's best testimonial, they will always. I just was on the uh, Smart Passive Income podcast for the fourth time. You know, that doesn't happen by accident. I mean, it's like I'm his best testimonial. Of course, he's going to have me back over and over again. Um, I'm one of his best, if not his best, because he mm -hmm. was one of my coaches. So it's like, if they have a course on RVing, go buy it, research it, look around in it and go take the course and write a review on your YouTube channel and say, it's awesome. And then interview them to, to brag on them and send people their way for a little while. Who cares? But because people, people collect things online. Like you're not just, no one's ever just going to buy your course on RV and you're their R R RV resource. Like I have hundreds of books and courses that I bought over the years on copywriting because I love it. I want to learn everything there is about storytelling and sales. I'm a collector of that knowledge, right? So people who buy your thing might buy their thing. People who buy their thing might buy your thing. And the more you can collaborate, the better. So anytime you're trying to do a guesting strategy, you have to work your way in or buy your way in. You got to serve them or you got to pay them. And that's the only two ways that you'll ever find that will get you on someone else's show. For everybody listening out there, it doesn't matter if it's a podcast, blog post, whatever. Like I got a thing the other day that said, hey, do you want to be featured in any of these magazines? And uh, one of them was Rolling Stone because I'd never been in Rolling Stone. So I was like, I want to do that. Maybe they'll do a feature on me on their website or something. And it was like nine grand. But for nine grand, I can be in Rolling Stone. Okay. That sounds cool. So I might cool. Do that, you know? So like that's how you get in is work your way in or buy your way in. So how can you then also to remember those people are on YouTube, but they also have Patreon accounts, Facebook groups. So uh, they might interact on Twitter. Like you might be able to like connect with them on the social media accounts that are connected to their main channel. And your ultimate goal might be just getting some retweets and stuff at first, but it leads eventually uh, to the YouTube channel stuff. Yeah. The biggest one in my field, they do a Sunday call and it's for one hour and it's open to anyone anywhere. And so I always jump on and I always ask questions and they're usually business related, but they answer them and they'll always say, oh, RV Mama forced back with a question. And so I, my question was, you know, how are you doing everything? Because they're like you, they have a blog and a podcast and everything, a content explosion daily. And he goes, well, I've been doing it for 10 years and I have 10 workers. And I was like, oh, he has a YouTube exactly. person. And I was comparing myself to him thinking like, I don't even know how he sleeps, you know, like, how is he exactly. doing all this? And so you're trying to do what we do. This is not do what we do. Whenever you find someone you want to be like, it's do what they did. Go back to his first YouTube video. Go back to their first video on that channel and see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, you got to think you got it. Every, everyone has to do that. It's the most important advice I give on this podcast every week. There is always a path. We can show you a path, but you have to take your step on the path. You're, you, everyone tries to take the step to the result, right? The result doesn't come without the other steps. You got to go pay the dues and go through the process and say no to a bunch of stuff and then say yes to very specific things. You know, like in our beginning journey, we decided very early on any business we had would have a podcast that built an email list that sold a membership. 
That's it. Everything else would come from that eventually. And I had to be patient. I had to be the glacier and I had to slow down and I had to say no to all the things I wanted to say yes to because it wasn't moving the needle. I was trying to be like these big entrepreneurs. I was, I was trying to be like Tim Ferriss, right? Well, Tim Ferriss already had a best selling New York Times bestseller book. Like I didn't have a bestseller book. Why am I trying to do anything like that guy until I write a book that's a bestseller? It doesn't make sense, right? So yeah, you got to you got to decide your first step, next step, and stop looking what everybody else does. All these strategies we teach are fine. The content explosion can be handled by one person if you're doing the first thing first. It when you get to you're going on a guest appearance every week, one guest appearance a week. When you get to a YouTube video every week or whatever you're doing now, when your YouTube videos are providing emails and and your email list is producing sales, then you can do content explosion. Then you can do these other things, right? But you got to do one thing before you can do everything. I think that's spot on because I love the flip lifestyle experience and blueprint so much. I've listened to the entire experience all the way through in the blueprint so many times. I and know I, to I told you not to do that. Don't, it's not Netflix. Don't binge your yeah, don't binge. No, I'm really working on that. But I think that you've really set forth a path because since I was doing Facebook groups and I started my Facebook group and it's very active. How many people are in your group? I have about 215. Imagine YouTube is at the middle of a circle and you can draw a line like a brainstorm up and draw another circle. You can promote the Facebook group. You can you can still have your Facebook group. You can still you're don't confuse social media for products or opportunities. Social media is just you slapping posters on phone poles around town. That's all it is. <laughs> it's like, if I have a band and I am in a town, I'm going to go slap. It's that I'm just telling people yeah. that I'm going to be at the bar playing on Friday <laughs> night. That's all I'm doing. These things point to the same thing. You can share on Instagram and everything. the contents there. If you have a one minute YouTube short, you can upload that to Instagram. That's fine for real. But like you're making, you're trying to focus on all those things. They're peripheral. You got to focus on the the through lines, the control lines, what we call it in our business. Like our control line is podcast guesting, podcast, email list, live event challenges, sales. That's our, that's our through line. That's the, those are the things that we can control. If once we do those, we can do other things, but you got to have that, that one line through your business. And then we teach that in the blueprint. You just got to stop and do it. Right. Before you go on to the next steps. Yeah. So where does that one-on-one -on -one coaching that I know you offer and, uh, you know, a lot of the people that are a little bit more ahead of me fit in right now? Is that something that I can do alongside with doing the membership or because I have my weekly meetings with my members. Focus but every single ounce of your energy on growing the membership. Okay. And then when you're hanging out with your members, offer them coaching. Don't confuse okay. non-buyers. Just get them to buy something first. It's a lot easier to get people into a membership and then you'll have a pool of people who you can sell coaching to. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to see where that really fit in. Well, yeah. this really helps with the, you know, it's like my own personal blueprint that you've offered because That's I right. do get caught up in wanting to be Shane Sam's today. <laughs> and I, I do, all do that. I'll you, you, there, you will though. be bigger and better than me at what you do though. I can't do what you can do. I am stop trying be Christine. You need to be Christine. Christine's got to know what Christine wants and is going for so that when you have this random idea in the shower to jump out and go to email camping world to see if they'll sponsor your podcast. And then you get a meeting and you work for a month to get a meeting and they sit down and go, how many people follow you on YouTube? A hundred. Oh, well, we, we can't do that. Sorry. There's nothing we can. Do. Here's a, here's a sticker for the back of here's a bumper <laughs> sticker for the back of your RV, right? Like it's like, no focus. <laughs> every ounce of energy into growing your audience and building your membership. And then you will find coaching clients there. Okay. Yes. Yes. My own personal blueprint. And I'm excited about this because you know that I'm going to be on your board at one of these income surges. Because I know you are. I know you are. I have, You're going to be one yes, of our success stories. I have so much that I just, when you mentioned service, it's why I chose you and why I found you. And a quick story for the listeners 
Shane actually found me across the stadium. We were at this huge conference center at Life Search because my son went up and said, my mom is a super fan. Can you sign my her autograph book? And it was literally, you know, like whatever they gave me at the front door. And Shane said, I'll do better than that. I'll come shake your mom's hand. And I turned around and I had my fan moment. I turned around from paying <laughs> to buy because I only came for you. Like, that's why I went to Life Search. And so I was standing and cheering and and there was many reasons why. One, I loved your Kentucky accent. Two, I loved your purpose because it's so in line with mine. Like, go make memories now. Don't let those moments pass. You know, the other things you're not going to remember how many hours you worked and all of that. So, and then just the heart that you have for your people and for service. I'm not doing this to make money. I haven't worked in 15 years, even though I have a law degree. I mean, I work at home and homeschooling and all that. So any, if I make 11 cents, it's more than I made yesterday. And of course that's a goal and that's what I want, but my heart is to serve people so that they can see that they can accomplish this. If my 10 year old can hook up my truck, literally the only thing he can't do is drive the truck. So if I know that my 10 year old and my 13 year old, when they're 18 years old can go get their own RV, which we're actually keeping our, we have two RVs right now, one that I bought to live in and one that I'm keeping because my 18 year old wants to go travel the country in it and go into film. Then I've created a legacy for them. And I want other people to know that they can do this. So that's why I'm so obsessed with book lifestyle and the experience and the blueprint. I can't stop listening to it. I was listening to your podcast this morning and I can't stop listening to it because it's, it's not just a business. It's a lifestyle and it's a community and it's Christ driven and the people care. And I just love everything about it. I'm still obsessed even more so now than the day that you came and shook my hand at income search. So I appreciate uh-huh. you and my own personal blueprint that you just gave me. Thank you for saying that. And like our goal, you know, our goal is to help you do what you can do. Like I can't help RV mamas. I ain't one. Right. <laughs> but if you follow the blueprint step by step and you do what you do best within that framework, eventually you'll have the opportunity to succeed. We just have to stay focused, uh, say no more than we say yes, and build the first thing so that we can build the second thing and the third thing. And I have no doubt that you will do it, Christine. So thank you so (laughs) much for being on the podcast today. And really quick, tell everybody where they can find you online. Uh, What's your website? It's www.rvmamma.com. OF, the number four. So RV Mama of four. And you can find me on all the social media there as well. And I would love to help anybody start this journey. It's changed my life. I cannot imagine not having a life of RVing. I truly can't. And I'd love to help anybody that wants to start that journey. And thank you, Shane. We appreciate you every day. All right, guys, that wraps up my interview with Christine. Man, she is so close to success. She's got all the puzzle pieces on the ground. Now she's got the box, the picture that she needs to look at. And the only thing that's going to keep her or you from success in starting, building, and growing an online business where you can flip your life and you can live the lifestyle you want is focus. You got to decide you're going to do something before you can do everything. And you've got to stop comparing yourself to everybody else out there that's been in business for five years, 10 years. You got to do what we did before you get to do what we do. So make sure in your online journey that you're looking at, hey, hey, how do people find me? How do I build an audience? How do I build an email list? What does my membership look like? The smallest version of it that I can release the fastest. And then how do I get more people to join it? Like those are, those are the simple questions that we answer every day in the Flip Lifestyle community, in the Flip Lifestyle Blueprint. Those are the questions that you and Christine and everyone has to do if they're going to build an online business of their own. If you're going to go out and get 100 people to pay you $100 a month and get make $10,000 a month, you got to keep it simple. You got to keep it focused. You got to forget looking at all the squirrels and the shiny objects. And you just got to go out and get something done so you can make that something better. All right, guys, that's all the time we have for the Flip Lifestyle Podcast this week. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. If we can help you in any way, head over to fliplifestyle.com, jump into the community, and we can help you take your first or next steps toward building an online business. Until next time, get out there, take action, and do whatever it takes to flip your life. I'll see you then.